G'day guys, it's Mark here from North Oz and in today's video, you join me in very sunny Cairns, which is a very nice change. It's been raining non-stop on and off and uh, the wet season never really left us. So we're gonna be testing out the Blue Eddy solar panel while we have the sun here. And we're also going to be hooking it up to our EB3A, which I've been running for quite some time, the Blue Eddy power station here, because I'm gonna be taking this bad boy up to the Cape with me in my trip to the tip. Speaking of that, we are going to be prepping, and this is a final video where we're gonna be prepping the Hilux ready to go up to the very tip of Australia. So we've got a little bit of a fit out to do in the back there. We didn't finish it off from our last episode, so we've got to do that as well. And if you guys stick around to the very end of the video, I'm going to show you how you can service the EGR roll track on your EGR roll track equipped vehicles. So that includes your Hiluxes and other vehicles as well that came with it. So if you guys stick around to the end, I'll show you how to service that because that needs to be working with all the dust that we're going to be kicking up on our way to the top of Australia. Let's get stuck into it. So we are doing exactly that today, guys. We are getting stuck into it now. This is the 200 watt solar panel from Blue Eddy. They sent it out for me to try to see if I like it and to make a little bit of content for you guys, but mostly to help me out when I'm doing my longest stays as well, when I'm doing my trips. Not so much the Cape trip because there's a lot of moving around, but more for my nice relaxed, uh, which is most of my weekend camping trips, where I get parked up for two or three nights and um, yeah, and, and I need a little bit of power to be put back into my systems. So we're going to be opening this up, see how it works, see if it's easy to open up or not. This is a 200 watt system, which is 80 more than what I had on my Prado, and it weighs a lot less than, um, than what I had on the Prado, because I had 120 watts on there. This is almost double the power, and it weighs a lot less. And it's got a nice little zip on the back here as well, like I said in the unboxing video. So very keen to get this open and um yeah let's see how much power it can pump into this ev3 i'm excited to know i always love looking at the numbers and seeing how it all works so let's get stuck into it see how easy or not this thing is to set up i'm sure it's going to be easy though it's got some buckles on the back here don't mind the leaves this is a kind of a real world setup like if you were going camping this is how it would look oh look at that so here are the solar panels here boom boom oh just keeps on going and they're actually um quite flexible um they are hard to the touch you can hear that uh they are a uh, monoline crystal so they are um you know they, they do have a little bit of flexibility in them but obviously uh, not the type that you would uh you know want to be crushing and standing on i don't think um but yeah so it's got these um it's also got a lot of these stands as well on the back here so if you guys can see that and um you can change the um, strap here i believe like this to give you more or less degrees what it looks like fully set up and it was pretty easy to do i found out very quickly that um the first setting was just probably the travel setting uh, for the stand but they are kind of like this um, semi-rigid sort of a cloth stand thing that sits back and it's quite solid uh, which is excellent and you can change the angle to try to catch that sun now you guys can see there is a little bit of shade coming over here so it is going to be an excellent sort of real world um, yeah real world sort of test because um, wherever you go guys there's probably going to be shade in uh, most of the places that you're going to be so it should give you an idea for how much power you guys can pump into your setups now I'm just going to get all the cables out here and you will need the cable that comes with your EB3A for this. Um, so this is the cable here that came with mine. I haven't used it yet because I haven't used it with solar. And it's just a matter of just simply plugging it in to the solar output, just like any other solar panel. And then we're gonna plug it in here. Now I've also got the power station charging up because I need it for my trip and it's just the most convenient way to charge things around the house. I've got my mozzie slash light combo, which I love, I love this thing. You can find links to this stuff down below. And I've also got my mozzie repellent as well. It's a Thermacell E55. I love that thing. Um, clears out mozzies like nothing and I am allergic to mozzies. So that is um, a very handy thing. We've only got 20 to 25 watts going in at the moment which is obviously not a lot and most of this solar panel is covered up so what we're going to do is we're going to move these panels in a minute to a more sunny place so just around the corner and um, and we'll see how much more we can get now so you guys can see this in real time what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to move these solar panels we don't have too much shade on the panels right now 
and you can see that they are absolutely <laughs> loving that now. So we're at about half of what these things can produce. Um, obviously afternoon sun is going behind my roof now. And um, yeah, so it's obviously not in the most ideal place, but still. So what are we up to now? About 110, 115 watts going in and we're only using like six watts on the output. Um, and it's saying 1.2 hours, so one hour to charge it uh, completely. That's actually crazy because if we just get an hour of sun now, this thing's going to charge all the way up. So that's actually really impressive. Now remember the EB3A is about 20 amp hours of power. So, um, you know, you can put that in whatever watt hours you want, 268, but I work with amp hours. So uh, for me, that's putting in about at 110 watts, you're looking at almost 10 amp hours um, going in. So 10 amps per hour, that's, that's a lot of current going in with, um, with a fold away portable setup. Now, if you guys are wondering exactly how I set this up, this is what we're looking at. Uh, obviously, it's not the most ideal setup. You know, in a perfect world, you'd probably have it out in a bit more of an open space. But, you know, this is a real world sort of setup where, you know, you're not always going to have all the space in the world at your campsite. So uh, in total, I think that it's fantastic. I got over 100 watts out of this. Um, the fact that I can get 100 watts plus out of something that I can just pick up and put down is unreal to me. Um, having come from different solar setups in the past, this is definitely a game changer. Um, now on the back, in terms of build quality, I really like this, um, I really like the, the firmness and the rigidness of, of these panels. And the stand on the back is also really rigid. It's not, I don't think it's metal by any means because it's not heavy at all but it is super solid. So when I put that down like that and I push on it, it's not moving at all. So it's a very rigid, very solid sort of setup. And you know, we've got a bit of wind around right now um, and it's not pushing this over at all. It's not even moving. So um, I think any lighter than this and it would probably start moving around um, and you know, getting chucked around in the wind. Now the build quality on this, like I said, is excellent. You've got this hexagon pattern that um, you know, beautifully wraps around the outside of it to protect it. You've got a nice pocket on the back as well that is weather sealed too. It looks like because it's got that nice little plastic there that covers over the zipper um, yeah and I'll put a whole bunch of technical specifications up on the screen for you if you guys want to have a look at that as well but yeah in total guys just using it generally uh, I think it's fantastic um, and it's definitely something I'm going to be taking when I do my weekend camps but uh, especially when I'm doing my big lap of Australia I'm going to be packing this as well now I was talking really quickly about the build quality I love the build quality but I think this got damaged in shipping which is a little bit disappointing and the, the handle although it's not broken there was a little washer that kind of popped out of it um, I'll show you on camera what it is I'm looking at and so the bottom clips aren't really holding it in place very well unfortunately but it's still like there's nothing wrong with it you can still pick it up move it around and stuff but yeah I think that's a fault on the shipping company side of things I'll still let Blue Eddy know that that happened but I don't think it's their problem like this is made as good as any other handle that you can find on the market um, so you know what are you going to do so um, yeah I'll let them know about it but yeah I'm not concerned about that with the build quality and, uh, and I have pretty high standards so uh, I love the stitching and stuff as well on the outside guys I think it's done really well uh, there you know it, I think they've done a good job with it it's just a little bit disappointing that the handle got damaged but apart from that guys like I love the way it packs up so we're gonna have a little bit of a look now at the how much charge this has put in I'll give it another few minutes of charging and then we'll see how much power it's put back into the blue eddy and then we'll pack it up and we'll see what it looks like and I'll give you my very quick final thoughts before we have to finish the fit out in the back of the Hilux so we got to get ready to go for our trip to the tip. So in the amount of time it took me to give you a quick look at the exterior build of the solar panel, it's already put 5% into the battery. You can see that the shade's starting to come over now, so that number's slowly dropping. But uh, yeah, overall, very impressed with the little setup that I've got going on here. Now guys, my final thoughts on the Blue Eti solar panel is it does have a bit of size to it, so it's not going to easily fit in my Hilux tray. It'll have to go on the back seat because um, it's just a bit too tall and I don't want to put it face down, even though I'm sure that it could handle it with the durability. Um, I just don't want to risk damaging it because it is, you know, it's a decent priced unit and it is a very nice unit as well. But as you can see, it's not a heavy unit by any means. You can see me moving it up and down and um, yeah, and setting up and pack up was very intuitive. It was very easy to do. So very happy with that. It's time to move on to the Hilux setup.
Let's get stuck into it. So sitting here on the table is exactly what we're gonna be doing for the rest of the video. So we've got these Wolfpack Pros that we're gonna be fitting out with these awesome canvas bags with the clear top. As you can see, I've already got one prepared because that's the one I've been using for like last seven months. And it has been so good that I went out and bought three more canvas bags because this box actually fits these canvas bags for some reason perfectly like to the centimeter it is unreal so when i do a bit of a time lapse and i'll give you a bit of a bit of a look at the very end once i'm finished organizing everything um, it's going to be a little bit of you know um shuffling around uh yeah i'll show you guys exactly how well these bags fit and you can get these from anaconda but i've got links to most of the stuff in the description if you want to check it out um so canvas bags great went out got them i also got a june fall drive as well same brand just because it was cheap and it looked really well made Great reviews as well, a June full drive um, tire deflator. So I'm gonna be giving that a test later on and see how that works, get it all set up so I know what I'm doing because when we start hitting those corrugations, we need to air down. Uh, so the other thing as well, guys, if you guys stick around to the end of the video, I will show you how to use the silicon spray to service your EGR roll track if you have a Hilux. So if you have a Hilux Rogue and you wanna stick around to the very end of the video, I'll show you how to service your roll track. Now, I've also got a whole bunch of different tie downs here as well, guys, whole different uh, sizes here, heaps of them, uh, to try to tie down the, uh, um, the boxes and also the water tank that I've got in the back of the Hilux. So that's what we've got here. Let's get stuck into it. So as you guys can see, we found a nice little spot here for the two wolf packs and also we've got the table. I'm not too sure if I want to take the table just yet. It is just another thing to take, but it does work. It fits there perfectly. And I've also got the water tank as well, which I ended up just mounting using just the factory, um, just a factory toe down um, point in the Hilux. So it's very useful. Uh, it, it kind of holds it in towards the side of the tub as well, but you know, this is the first time I'm running this setup, which is a bit of a risk. Um, I've taken a lot of stuff, which I'll show you around in these boxes, probably while I'm talking, just to save some time. But I've taken a lot of stuff out of that big cargo box that I used to have up here. And I've put that um, either, I've taken some of the tools out of that and put it into one of these boxes here. And I've also taken some of those tools and put them in the factory tool um, spot under the seat, just because I'm not gonna be using it very often. So I figured I'd just, store it somewhere, not as easy to get as the, being in the boxes, but still, um, at least I'm bringing it. That's what I'm thinking anyway. So boxes are here. Uh, I'm still working my way around these boxes, trying to figure out what I do like and what I don't like. I'm trying to keep them into categories. So all my kitchen stuff is just in the one box. And then I've got kind of like a miscellaneous box, which will have all my technology, things like power banks, lights, all that sort of stuff. Um, so that way when I'm traveling around during the day and I want to get say like a sandwich or something, I don't need to pull out both of the boxes. I just need to take the one that's on the top. So that's my thinking at this point. Um, and yeah, and then that kind of gives you a bit of a bit of an insight into my mind as to how I was thinking this would all be set out. And um, yeah, I think that that's, that's a pretty good setup. I'm pretty happy with that. So there will be a little bit more adjustment uh, in these boxes, a little bit more shuffling around between now and when we leave. But at the very beginning of that travel video, I will be showing you guys exactly what I've got in uh, the Hilux. So the setup of what we're taking uh, and included in that video as well, in that big travel video that we've got coming up, I will also make sure during the trip, I'll give you guys little updates as to how things are going. And um, yeah, and exactly, you know, what goes in what boxes and what I'm taking so you guys can get some ideas uh, for your own setup. So the last thing that we have to do now is to just um, give this EGR roll track a good service because right now it's not in very good shape. I'll show you exactly what it's doing uh, and hopefully we can, we can fix that and recalibrate it and do some of the things it needs to do to make sure 
it is reliable uh, for our big trip. So yeah, looking forward to it. It's gonna be a big six day trip all the way to the very tip of Australia. So we wanna make sure that everything on this vehicle is working well, even though it's a brand new vehicle, you still have to do a little bit of maintenance. So I'll give the vehicle a bit of a once over, but to me, and most importantly, this EGR roll track, it needs to work while I'm away. So let's get stuck into that now. To service the EGR roll track, you're going to need a 2.5 millimeter Allen key bit, silicon spray that's plastic compatible, a towel and or a blower to speed things up for the drying. You also need water and most importantly, a can-do attitude. The first step is to push the button on the roller cover to send it all the way towards the front of the vehicle so that you can push in the clutch so that now the roller cover has free range of motion without needing to use the motor. Now using the 2.5 millimeter Allen key bit, undo the two screws which will bring down the little hatch there, revealing the motor and the insides of the EGR roll track and make sure you do it to both sides. Now you're gonna to have to fully close the EGR roll track so that it is fully covered. So you're gonna to have to squeeze in there in the dark and now you'll be able to see all of the dirt and grime and stuff that, that, that have been caught up in that EGR roll track container. And then now you'll be able to get all that stuff out using the hose. Uh, and if there's any big pieces, make sure you grab them and just chuck them out of the car. When you're finished with that, it's recommended that you let it dry over a period of time. However, I am very impatient. So do as I say, not as I do. In this case, what I did was I just went and dried it with a towel and then gave it a good blowout with the air blower so that there wasn't any water on the uh, little swirls where I'm about to add some silicon spray in a second. Now it's time to spray that swirl that the, uh, that the cover coils up into. I'm gonna spray that with the plastic compatible silicon spray. And then when I'm finished with that, I'm also going to hit the tracks on the side of the tub to make sure it's moving smoothly. With that done, you need to engage a clutch by pulling that little white plastic tab back out. And you also need to bolt those little hatches back in. And then now we are ready to put the uh, Hilux into party mode. So we need to recalibrate the top because we've been messing around with it. So the way you do that is you just hold the two buttons on the EGR roll track. You just hold them for about 10 seconds. It'll do a little song and dance. And then when it's finished, it'll be fully calibrated and ready to be used as normal. And now you have fully serviced your EGR roll track. Alrighty guys, that concludes today's video and I'm still not entirely convinced on that EGR roll track. I gave it a full clean out as you guys saw. So hopefully that was useful to some of you guys, but I'm still not entirely convinced it's going to hold up for the trip but we'll see how it goes. Um, and as well, just with the tide deflator, I probably gave up about halfway through it because it was getting too dark and I couldn't see what I was doing. But um, yeah, and it was starting to let out a whole pile of air. And I, so I aired it back up very quickly because uh, I got some errands to run in the morning. But yeah, I had a bit of a play around with it before I go. So yeah, the trip is happening this week, guys. I'm super stoked to, um, to be going. And yeah, I can't wait to take you all along with me. So make sure you guys have subscribed like the video and uh, yeah, and it should be a pretty good time. I can't wait to show you guys what we have planned for our trip to the tip. I'll see you later.